Paul is back in his old stomping ground in Gloucestershire for some R&R &R and R. That's rest, relaxation and row. Obviously the Chinese water deer and the muntjac we shoot had have a lot of them, but my, my choice is probably roe deer just because of the time of year, I think, more than anything. And I can get away from all the ha hassles of work, <laughs> which is stalking. <laughs> How's that work? I can't really say hassles of clients, can I? Because that's what sort of like pays the bills. <laughs> no, it's just nice to get out on your own and, uh, well, say on my own. <laughs> Seems to have got tagged along with a cameraman again today. <laughs> yeah. Also, it may become apparent he has a new toy, Zeiss's new rangefinders. See that sign? Guess how far? See that roundel? 286. Guess how far to the jogger? 110. <laughs> Bizarre. No footpath there. See the fallen tree? Guess how far? This game may wear a little thin. Anyway, what are we after? If there's a good buck and it's a good stalk and I get a bit of a, a thrill from it, then I'll shoot it, to be fair. But if it's not, then I'll leave it. You know, it's, it's about it's like the experience. A young buck, I'll just shoot it anyway, just for the cold plan. But we try and leave two or three good bucks here every year just to keep, you know, keep the, the genes going through. But we haven't shot any. So good books off here really too much. So do one or two of the older books coming out. So basically, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Options being kept open there. At the end of a plantation, Paul does some calling to stir things up a bit. In some circles, this technique is frowned upon as it educates the deer, just like poorly executed fox calling. But Paul is here so infrequently, he reckons it doesn't really matter. Sometimes you get foxes coming to it, sometimes you get bucks coming to it, just to see inquisitive to see what the squeaking's all about. Um, if you do it quite erratic, then obviously it's a bit more distressed, I'd call that's quite calm and squeak, help, help, I'm lost, rather than, oh my God, I'm getting eaten by a fox. <laughs> As we stalk a ride, there's movement in the right-hand side. On closer inspection, there's a doe with two yearlings, a male and a female. Whoop. They're quite late fawns, I'd say. So she hasn't kicked them off yet. And basically, she made a run for it. They're trying to catch her up. Perfect one to take that young buck. That's the doe. The buck will be second. Like he always is. Here he comes. Woo! My heart's going. Why do I get so excited on road here? It's amazing, I had this discussion with a friend last time I was up here. I shoot loads, hundreds of deer a year. Hundreds. And I still get excited and my little heart goes. <laughs> I knew the shot was good. 119. Nice, of the sticks. Yeah, perfect. I think I can find that blood trail. Sound was good. I could see him in there. I still like to go and see what the, you know, the strike area is, just to see what blood's about. All right, go have a look at him. Yes! <laughs> Perfect. Oh. So why would he be in velvet? Um, young buck, late buck, it's obviously a late pair of fawns. Um, that's why they're still with the doe, what we know, what, what date we know, the... May the 7th. 7th, yeah. So, she'll be kicking them off just now, but because they're late, they're still sticking with her. Yeah, still quite soft at the tops. What do you say, David? You've seen enough deer uh, shot with the camera? It's all right. It's all right? 
Look at that. Oh, look at that. Disgusting. See him? Yeah. Ked. Ooh, imagine one of them crawling on your back. Look at he ticks right up through him. Oh, gross. Right up through here. Look at these up here. Look. Lots of ticks. Um, it's quite funny because a Norwegian fellow from Zeiss, when we were on one of the hunts, he said to me, Oh, you tuck your trousers in there. You, you think you're some sort of soldier? I said, no. I said, in England, got a lot of ticks. And my theory is when my boots are higher, it's less surface area for a tick to grab hold of. So, and hence, I think it does work, unless you're obviously through longer grass, but the shorter grass, and obviously they're tucked in as well. So, less chance of getting ticks. And another tick tip, actually, if you get a tick on you, and you get it off, and obviously you're checking for the bullseye, but I've had an infection, it's quite interesting if you just put a biro mark around it and then you'll see if it goes up and down. You're just marking the oh. circumference of it. The circumference of the, the infection area, so the red swollen area. Yuck. Do the yuck, yuck, yuck. biro around the edge of that and then by the next day you'll see whether it's, it's got more inflamed or less inflamed. And if it's getting less and less and less, you know, you know it's not a problem. But if it gets more and drastically more, then you know obviously to look at, you know, be a bit more aware of it. The last time we were in this patch of ground, Paul was field testing the Zeiss V6 scope. So, after some proper abuse, how is it working out? Give me the V6 again. Hang on, one, two, three. Hang on, okay. V6! <laughs> you enjoying the scope? Brilliant scope. Absolutely first class scope. Mid range scope. Um, does everything. I can't fault it, to be fair. Um, good light gathering, easy to use, good dot on it. The red dot's phenomenal. Um, small, same as the V8 red dot, basically. Um, it's got the, um, the turrets on the top as well, so you can click up. Um, yeah. Value for money, definitely value for money, scope. And I've stuck some horrible camera on the end of it. That is a standard when you come along with me, David. And it's the first time we've tried it today. We just can we just put this this thing on the back of the scope, Paul? It's okay. It's it's, it's just come from Russia. <laughs> well, I think it shows the red dot off anyway, from what we've seen. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I think it showed me shaking around and and like doing about like four circles around the buck, and then. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a good technical way to shoot. If you do a circle on the third circle, you stop, control, and fire. You just made that up. Yeah, totally. Basically, come up. Basically, get yourself comfortable. Some people come up, some people come down, onto there, Pew. job done. If you overthink it, over try it, aim too much, you pull off, you're, you've basically got to get yourself comfortable, on, come up, comfortable, Pew. all in a matter of two seconds, or if that, a second. So, it worked this time. Right, see if we can do it again. <laughs> With our very pleasant evening coming to an end, Paul spots a buck on the other side of the field. He wants to halve our range, but it looks like another good animal to take. Perfectly happy. Right on the money. Five clicks up. 235 metres. Five clicks up. Well, and I was steady on a nice bipod rest. Across a little valley. Good backstop. 
Uh, again, it's another young buck, perfect buck. That's why I was quite keen to get him because the boundary just there. And there's a road, you get a bit of poaching on this side here and they come off the main road here and just drive straight down through. So, covering sting in that one. Um, perfect. You know, we're out shooting crows every day at this sort of distance. Got your binoculars as well, so you, you clicked it in, you know exactly the range. Um, you give me the clicks, dial them in. Is it still stalking? You've still got to pull the shot off, so yes it is. See this buck? Already you can see straight away. He's obviously an earlier buck, even a similar sort of size, but he's better health already. Not with a doe anymore, so he's been pushed away. So those two or three weeks have made a better, a better buck wintering through and a better buck in the spring. Oh yes. That's a better shot than the other one. Yes, I know. That's because on the bipod. I bet you, looking now, I haven't looked obviously, that there should be less ticks on it because it's a cleaner animal. Ta-da, yeah. One, two, couple of little ones there. Couple there, yeah. So, this is the one I'll be eating. <laughs> yeah, really pleased, really happy. Brilliant, brilliant end to the day for me. That's it, we're done. And judging by Paul's smiles, the rest, relaxation and row therapy has worked a treat for our dear manager. For more about the new Zeiss rangefinder, go to bit.ly slash Zeiss rangefinder. See those trees?